Why use a 50 ohm feed through termination? A feed through termination is used to change the high input impedance of an instrument or device under test to 50 ohms to match the impedance of the coaxial cable and or 50 ohm signal source. An example would be a high impedance oscilloscope input, a meter input, or perhaps an amplifier you're testing with a high input impedance since many signal source outputs are designed to run into a 50 ohm load. When the cable is long compared to the signal wavelength, you want to avoid standing waves that may vary the signal magnitude versus frequency. This, they are especially needed when signals have a fast rise timer and are likely to reflect. If the source is a good 50 ohms, this is called back terminated, it will dampen the reflections from the poorly terminated end of the cable, and this is why you can often get, get away without using a termination. Worst case is when neither end of the coax is properly terminated in 50 ohms. This is an interesting case of the use of a termination. So here I have the uh, function generator sent to a 1 megahertz uh, triangle wave. And with both outputs outputting the same thing. So I'm put, taking one output and running it through a termination into channel 1 which is the trace you see in yellow. Now channel 2 is coming out and driving about a 58 nano Henry inductor, which is just this piece of wire here. And this piece of wire is essentially differentiating the, uh, uh, the current going through it and generating the square wave. Now the square wave has a very, very fast rise time, faster than I can measure with this oscilloscope. But when I measure it on my 500 megahertz scope, I'm getting a rise time of about 3 nanoseconds. So the output of this is driving this coax cable, and that's coming into the 50 ohm load here, going into channel 4 of the oscilloscope, which you see in green. Now let's see what happens when I take the termination off channel 4. Look at that ringing. That's actually a combination of ringing and the signal bouncing back and forth. Uh, but let me put the termination back on. Again, here's the 50 ohm termination. Back on. Anyway, here you can see the uh, waveforms with and without the termination. So you can see that uh, we get a damped, re uh, damped reflection response without the termination. And with the termination, the uh, signal is very clean. So I've been looking for a long time for reasonably priced terminations for my home lab. New terminations from domestic sources are priced at $45 to $200 each. That's a lot more than I'm willing to spend. Used name brand terminations on eBay are typically priced at $25 plus when you include shipping. And uh, that's kind of high. And a Tektronix 5 watt one I recently bought, supposedly as new old stock, arrived with burnt connections and had loose pieces rattling inside. I got a refund, but I was not happy. I'm not interested in these plastic Chinese ones with BS specifications you get inundated with when you search for them on uh, eBay or many sources. That you, these things are everywhere. They have these plastic connections that are just crap. These things always break. And the, uh, the specifications are pure BS. There's no way this thing works up to a gigahertz. And look at this. One, it says 1 watt and then 10 volts DC. Well, last time I checked, 10 volts into 50 ohms was 2 watts. So which one is it? It's BS. And then here they have this stupid warning, like you're going to get electrocuted if you uh, uh, touch the resistors inside. B.S. Anyway, recently these uh, Chinese, they called them copper adapters, two for $10 bottles appeared on Amazon Prime. 
I ordered some since I could easily get a refund if they were crap, since I have Amazon Prime. And although they're not quite as advertised, they're still excellent for the money, and I'm pretty happy with them. So you can see here, this is the uh, how they appear on Amazon, and over here you can see on eBay. And see, you can see now somebody on, there's uh, some Chinese seller on eBay that's got some crappy version that they're trying to copy and sell. Uh, you know, um, these are not the same. They don't look like they're uh, made as well. But I haven't really tried these to tell you the truth, so I don't know. Anyway, if you look at these, uh, he here's the adapter, and here's some pictures of it. You can see here, here it is standing up, standing up, and here I unscrewed this piece over here. So you can see inside there's two 100 ohm, 1% 1 1 8 watt resistors. The leads are very short. One the leads, one side of the resistors goes on to the center conductor, and the other ends of the leads is soldered onto the body here. Now this end piece that fits on the uh, termination, this piece is magnetic, so I assume it's some sort of plated steel. Now, and then the body and everything else is non-magnetic. If we look at the center conductor, it kind of looks like it's gold plated, but it's not really, because you grind into it, it's the same color as the outside. So I assume it's some sort of copper alloy with a gold-like tint. Um, I'm not really sure, but it seems to work just fine. And then here I ground into the uh, body of it in a couple places to check the composition. And the color does not change. It's still the silver color. which is, And so I assume it's uh, uh, a nickel alloy since uh, copper seems to stick to it readily. But, you know, it screws, it's, when it's screwed down, um, it's completely shielded. The short leads from the resistor go to the body, so they'll help conduct heat out. As a terminator goes, it's actually a pretty good design. So let's compare these copper terminators to some uh, name brand ones. So here I have four of the copper terminators, two Tektronix ones, which are here. These are the four copper ones. An Emco, which I think is the OEM for this Tektronix one, and then an HP. These are all quarter watt. These are two watt. This is one watt. This is a precision terminator. You can see that it's within 0.1% of 50 ohms. The Tektronix ones are almost 2% out. But the copper ones are all very close, which you'd expect since they're made with... 1% uh, resistors. Anyway, if you put the terminators on the end of a cable and, and look at the S11 or uh, reflected energy, at low frequency they're very good and they get worse as they go up in frequency. The copper ones are the worst. The Tektronix ones are just slight and the MCO are here and then the HP one is better. But the thing is, this isn't the whole story. We're looking at the screen of my vector network analyzer. The vector network analyzer is set to sweep from 10 megahertz up to 510 megahertz. The screen set on a dual display. On Cartesian coordinates, we have S11 from 0 dB down to minus 50 dB. And in the middle, we have the Smith chart. The vector network analyzer is hooked to this coax cable and the calibration plane is placed right at the end of this cable. And so all the energy that's coming up this cable is hitting this open and reflecting back. So S11 is showing 0 dB, showing all that the energy is being reflected back into the network analyzer. And on the Smith chart, we're over here at infinity, which is, is what you should get for an open. Now let's see what happens when I take this terminator and put it on the end of the cable. Oh, that's actually pretty good. We look here at low frequencies. We're at minus 40 dB. Anything better than minus 30 dB is excellent. And anything better than minus 20 dB is acceptable, is good. And it's minus 20 dB, all below tw minus 20 dB, all the way out to 400 megahertz. And we can see that the impedance here starts at 50 ohms and comes out and, and becomes slightly capacitive as we go up in frequency. 
But the problem is we don't use feed through terminators on the end of cables like this. We put them on the end of scope. So let's see uh, on the inputs to oscilloscope. So let's see what happens when I put this on the input to my 100 megahertz oscilloscope. That's not very good. So right now the oscilloscope is set for uh, 100 millivolts per division. And you can see here that the, the, it's just 30 dB at, at, 10, at uh, 10 megahertz. By the time we get to 100 megahertz, we're only at about 11 dB, minus 11 dB in S11. That's really crappy. And if we look here at the uh, Smith chart, it's starting out near 50 ohms, but then it's rotating around, going capacitive, inductive, and back capacitive again indicating that there's some path length inside the oscilloscope. Now if I go to uh, if I go to 50 millivolts per division nothing happens. Now I'm back to 100 millivolts to, per division. Now let me go up to 200 millivolts per division. I don't know if you heard that relay click but you can you can actually see now that the the uh, S11 and the, the uh, Smith chart has changed. Let me do that again. This is 100 millivolts per division, 200 millivolts per division. And so now if I go 200 millivolts per division and keep increasing, 500 millivolts, 1 volt per division, 2 volts per division, there's a very slight change there, but not much. It really stays about the same. So if you look here, this is the, uh, down here, you can see we have, this is the, uh, when all of the various uh, terminations I showed in that one page are hooked to the end of the cable, we get a spread in what they look like. But once we put it on the input to the scope, there's no difference, essentially. They, they all look about the same. For 100 millivolts per division or less, we're up here at 200 millivolts per division or greater. We're here when they are hooked to my SDS-1104 Sigland oscilloscope. Anyway, so what's going on? Now, I measured about 16 and a half picofarads of input capacitance to the oscilloscope. And so if you look at the uh, input to the oscilloscope, uh, if you do, do a very simple model and look in, you'll see the 50 ohm termination and uh, we'll say with the total capacitance here of the scope plus whatever residual stuff is in the terminator 16 and a half puff and then there's also a one meg ohm resistor in parallel well the 50 ohms in parallel with one meg is just 50 ohms so if we calculate the s11 we expect for 50 ohms in parallel with 16 and a half picofarads we get this red line and we can see up to about uh, almost 200 megahertz it matches pretty well and uh, on the uh low uh, the higher sensitivity or uh version of the uh um inputs input ranges at higher input ranges uh, we get a little better return loss but what we see is it really doesn't matter which terminator we use the input uh, reflection is about the same because it's dominated by the capacitance and the uh, uh, input impedance to the scope not the terminator itself so how can we improve it you can always improve an input match if you put an attenuator in front so over here at the left we have the feed through termination only going to the input of the scope and so here's the uh, Smith chart and so you can see here it moves as we go up in frequency and you know the match is okay at low frequencies but gets worse as we go up we put a 20 db attenuator in front you can see here we're down around minus 40 db which is an incredibly good match but to gain that good match we've only got one tenth the input signal in magnitude and one one hundredth in power that's going into the scope
or going you know, going into the load. It's actually the voltage is all that goes into the scope. The energy goes into the termination. So let's see what happens with various other uh, uh, attenuators we use. Zero dB is straight into the scope. Three dB. This is with a three dB pad. We get a little bit better. Six dB. You can see here we're down below minus 20 dB all, out, all the way out to above 300 megahertz. 10 dB is better and then when you get to the 20 dB pad it's incredibly good. In reality 6 dB is probably good enough to guarantee a good match. I tend to use 6 dB and 20 dB pads most of the time because it's easy to divide and multiply by 2 or 10 versus the other numbers you get when you use different other, other uh, uh, attenuator pads. So what did we learn here today? All of the tested feed-through terminations yielded an equivalent S11 match when connected to the uh, connected to a high impedance oscilloscope input, and probably any quality uh, feed-through termination would be the same. So it really doesn't matter which one you use. The main consideration on which one to use is the power handling capability you need. The low-cost Chinese copper feed-through terminations work great if you can live with the quarter-watt power capability. Remember, a quarter-watt is 24 dBm or 3.5 volts RMS. And you can improve the input match to your oscilloscope or almost any load for that matter with the use of a fixed inline attenuator. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos from me, please subscribe. Anyway, thank you for watching.